delighted to introduce our first speaker, a colleague of mine, Andrew Josie. Andrew is our Vice President of Standards and Certification at the Open Group. And Andrew oversees all the certification and testing programs of the Open Group and manages the standards process for the Open Group. Since he joined the company in 1996, Andrew has been closely in standards development projects, including the specifications and certification development for the Archimate, TOGAF, POSIX, and the UNIX program. He's a member of IEEE, Usenix, Floss, Floss UK, and the Association of Enterprise Architects. And Andrew's going to talk to us today about TOGAF virtual certification and training. And we will then have a 15 minute Q&A session with Andrew. So please get the, get the questions coming. And I can see he's already ready to go um, from Oxford, I think, in the UK. So Andrew, over to you. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks, Steve. Hello from Oxford. So I think it's raining out the window at the moment. Let's just uh, see if we can get these slides going, which is always the first challenge of the day. Okay, yes, here we go. And uh, we'll just start by um, looking at today's agenda. Um, I think Steve's covered most of this, but um, I'll be talking first about virtual certification and training, some of the efforts that we've made there to uh, obviously mitigate uh, the current circumstances. Uh, and then we will be um, having a Q&A panel. In fact, I think I've got a few of my colleagues who, who may join me from the certification team on that. And uh, then we'll take a break and then we'll have um, some members of the forum and also Sonia Gonzalez, who's our forum director. So we have the two co-chairs, Paul Homan, uh, Mick Adams, and Sonia, who is our forum director, talking about what's happening in the forum. And then Chris Frost is going to tell us about uh, one of the projects that's underway, one of the initiatives, which is um, about uh, the TOGAF standard and Agile. So how EA can support Agile delivery and support the uh, Agile enterprise. So let's uh, get into my slides. Let's, uh, so we've done the welcome. And uh, let me just uh, turn my camera off to uh, save on the bandwidth for now. So I'm going to be talking about three topics today. I'll talk about uh, TOGAF training, TOGAF certification, and then I'll also talk about open badges. Uh, before we do, just a quick um, reminder about what the Open Group is. Um, the Open Group is a global consortium that enables the achievement of business objects through technology standards. Um, we have a vision of boundaryless information flow achieved through global interoperability in a secure, reliable, and timely manner. We have 750 member organizations that are headquartered in 46 countries. We have staff and local partners in 12 countries, so the Open Group is, is global. The Open Group training and certification programs are based on the standards produced by our members. So you see on this, this diagram here, the flow from uh, our members working together in forums and work groups to produce standards, which then lead to certification and training programs. The standards are developed and reviewed by acknowledged leaders in their fields ensuring that um, the certifications we produce are based on industry accepted best practices and expertise. Let's now jump into the first of the three topics that I wanted to talk about today, and we'll look at TOGAF training. The Open Group has 68 training organizations worldwide that offer accredited training. What do we mean by accredited training? Well, that's where the Open Group assesses um, each course to ensure it meets the quality standards to become uh, an official training course from the Open Group. And so far at the current moment, there are 69 accredited TOGAF training courses. Our accredited training is delivered in 15 languages, um, which include English, French, Czech, Polish, Chinese, Japanese, German, Dutch, Turkish, Arabic, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, Finnish, and Swedish. <laughs> Interesting that I looked those all up. And they are delivered in a number of delivery formats. So they can be delivered in classroom, they can be remote classrooms for virtual sessions, e-learning, and also there is blended delivery that's, that's allowed. So some, some trainers may prefer to do a mixture of, um, of, of those three delivery methods. One thing we've done with um, 
the current circumstances is to make sure that all of the open group accredited training course providers are able to deliver their courses as virtual instructor led courses. And we've made that easy to find. If you go to the open group website, you click on the certifications tab, you can easily click on our virtual resources page and then that will lead you off to a couple of additional pages. This one shows the calendar that we're running at the moment to make it easy to find a, a virtual classroom course. And this one actually shows where you can get an e-learning course. Um, not all of our providers provide e-learning, some of them do. Stepping now into certification. Uh, as Steve mentioned, uh, we're very proud that, um, of the TOGAF standard. Um, many of the open group standards have become industry standards. Uh, we look at uh, POSIX, UNIX, um, we see things like the FACE consortium at its avionics standards. Uh, we like to think as TOGAF is the, uh, the TOGAF standard is the de facto EA standard. And uh, we see it widely referenced in recruitment and the open group architecture certifications regularly feature in the top paid IT skill lists, such as the foot report. So it's definitely, uh, they are certifications that are recognized in the industry and worth having. What is TOGAF certification? Well, it's a globally recognized and portable credential. So it's not tied to one specific specific vendor or knowledge of one specific technology. It's, it's vendor neutral. It allows you to demonstrate your commitment to the EA discipline, to your employers and to your peers. So it's one way to show that, yes, I know about EA. I know I am committed to the discipline of being an enterprise architect through your TOGAF certification. It's market driven. So that means we've actually got education, training and certification that backs behind the standard. So you know, the information to skill up is uh, easily and readily available. Today we have a portfolio of TOGAF certification. So it's no longer just um, TOGAF certification. We have um, the actual foundation and certified levels. And then we have a few other certifications behind that. And I'll talk about those in the next few slides. But before we dive into the, the new areas, I will first focus on uh, the two levels that most of you hopefully are familiar with. That's the TOGAF Foundation Certification and TOGAF 9 Certified. These are often referred to as level one for foundation and level two for, for certified. TOGAF 9 Foundation is, is about um, uh, obtaining a basic understanding of the TOGAF 9 standard. And that's suitable really for anybody who's working in, in a role associated with an architecture project. And it's a first introduction to the TOGAF standard. So if you've never come across it before, you know, this is a good place to start. And you can also um, use this as a step on stepwise learning, as we'll see in, 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 a, in the next slide. TOGAF certified is, about, is really for individuals requiring a deeper understanding of the standard. So it's being able to analyze and apply the standard. And this is really professionals uh, aimed at professionals working in an organization where the TOGAF standard has been adopted and those professionals who are participating in architecture projects and initiatives. So it's really, you know, it's also aimed at architects who are responsible for developing architecture artifacts and also for architects who are looking to introduce TOGAF into an architecture practice. As I mentioned on that slide, there, it is possible to do stepwise development and uh, this slide shows the path to certification. So uh, you have a choice really whether you wish to do a step at a time, in which case you can take um, a single part exam. So you can take the part one exam, get to foundation and then take the part two exam. Or you can actually take what we call the combined part one and two exam, where the two exams are actually put together and you can go straight to the higher level, the TOGAF 9 certified level. If we look at the content here, this is the foundation level. Um, the TOGAF 9 foundation level includes 13 learning units. Learning units are typically sort of 30 minute chunks. And here we see it's a sort of high level concepts, basic concepts, course concepts, introduction to various uh, areas of the standard. To go to the higher level, in addition to the foundation, you have to do an additional 27 learning units, which makes a total of 40 learning units altogether. So you're getting a lot more in depth here. 
And what we see, a typical course will typically be about four days to cover both levels. The certifications are supplemented by, by what we call open badges, and I'll talk about open badges in more detail a little bit at the end of this uh, session today. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about today is the badge for the TOGAF standard version 9.2. Since TOGAF 9 certification has been active since 2009, we needed a way to show that an individual has up-to-date knowledge of the 9.2 release. So this is why we've introduced this badge to show that. There are two paths to earn this badge. Um, first path is um, you've actually, I mean, yeah, one of the paths is that you've taken an accredited 9.2 course, and then you will get this badge issued with your certification badge. The other path I will show on this slide is actually if you've taken your qualification before the 9.2 release is, was available. So this is the path for individuals who've taken their TOGAF 9 certification before 9.2. And um, it's basically a very short course which introduces the, the changes between 9.1 and 9.2. And then you can get this, this badge will be issued to you. And once you earn this badge, you will also be awarded the 9.2 badge. One of the new badges we have available is TOGAF Business Architecture Level 1. This is typically a two-day course, and it focuses on business modeling and developing a business architecture based on the TOGAF standard version 9.2. We currently have nine accredited courses, and we have a study guide available for this. So this is about looking at um, business architecture concepts such as developing business models, business model canvas, business capabilities, business scenarios, information mapping, value streams, how you apply all that in the development of a business architecture based on the 9.2 standard. Another new credential we have is around risk and security. And this focuses on, on uh, applying risk and security with the TOGAF standard. So that's quite new. We don't have um, uh, much uptake on that one at the moment, but that's a, a brand new one that we've just recently introduced. Obviously, I would be remiss not to mention the other certifications that um, that the Open Group has, and we've covered all you. Those of you who've been attending the last few days will have heard of of some of these technologies. We have um, certification for the IT for IT reference architecture. We have a new certification program for the Digital Practitioner Body of Knowledge. Uh, that's active again, like all the other programs. Um, we have study guides for that, just just fresh, freshly printed. Uh, we also have an Archimate certification program that has been recently up, updated to 3.1, version 3.1 of the Archimate specification. And again, we've refreshed all of our training and study materials around there. And lastly, in the risk and security area, uh, we have the Open Fair certification, which ties in a way to the risk and security credential that, um, that I showed on the previous slide. Now, enabling each of these certifications are exams. Obviously, with knowledge-based certification, we like to make sure that we have a fair and equitable measure of knowledge, and we do that through exams. And we typically have um, simple multiple choice exams covering the sort of level one topic areas. And then we have what we call um, scenario-based questions, which are a little bit um, sort of in-depth, where you have to do a bit more analysis and application to answer the questions. Um, most of our exams are now available for remote delivery over the internet. Um, you can go to this link here. Um, again, a pull down from our certifications tab at the Open Group will take you to the online proctored exams information page. We actually use a solution called OnView from Pearson View. And this is actually quite interesting. It uses AI technology to allow you to self check in using a smartphone. Um, if you're interested on this, there is a YouTube video where you can find out more information. And if you are considering taking your exam at home, there's a system test where you can check the suitability of your device and also your internet, internet connection. Um, I've heard some stories, obviously, you know, with the lockdown, it's not necessarily suitable if you're in a noisy environment, if you've got lots of kids running around to run into the, the room when you're taking your exam. So may not be suitable for everybody, but um, what we're seeing is quite a increased uptake compared to where we were before now. So, so that's good. 
Now I'd like to finish this section on certification by taking a look at the status of TOGAF certification worldwide. Uh, as Steve mentioned, um, the headline numbers here, we're just under 100,000 TOGAF certifications. I was trying to think of some analogies about large crowds that may not be the what we should be thinking about at this time of the day, but I, I did come up with a few a few area a few analogies. For example, this is about the uh, capacity of the Melbourne Cricket Ground, apparently, uh, also a bit a bit more than the capacity of the Wembley Stadium in the UK. And I think perhaps uh, I wasn't too good on US football stadiums, but I believe the Ohio Stadium, doing a Wikipedia lookup, has about a hundred thousand capacity as well. So it's a it's a large body of people. And here you can see the split um, between foundation and certified. Some some people prefer to do just straight to certified. Other people have taken the stepwise development. If we look worldwide, um, we're now seeing certification in 149 countries. Um, we've actually seen steady growth in the number of countries over the years. So I was looking this up uh, seven years ago. We were having certifications in 62 countries. Five years ago, 122. And two years ago, when 9.2 was introduced, we were in 137 countries. So I think we're starting to run out of countries where we can uh, where we can uh, have more certifications. Now, this is a bit of an eye test. Now, the good news is, uh, the next few slides, I do zoom in. So if we take a look here, if we take you on a world tour and look at some of the stats here, we can see that um, six of the top 10 countries are in the Northern Hemisphere, including UK, USA, the Netherlands, France, Canada, and Germany. Um, if we look in North America, obviously besides the US, which is at uh, 13,000, I should say the US and the UK are quite close, um, uh, both in the 13,000. So we see Canada there at uh, 3,800. We've also got Mexico, which actually comes in at number 23 in the world. If we move down, let's just move down in our world tour here. Uh, if we look at Central America, I've actually added an, a number there for the number one country in Central America and the number one country being Costa Rica. Um, that's actually followed by Panama, which I don't have on this map, which has 23. If we do a quick tour around South America, we can see a top three of Colombia, Brazil, and Peru. If we move over to Africa and we take a look at the rest of the world, we can see in Africa, we have the top three of South Africa, which is actually number 10 in the world, um, Egypt, and followed by Nigeria. In the Middle East, we see the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. Uh, they're actually 18 and 21 in the world, so they're, they're quite high too. If we move over to Asia, we see India in a dark color there. That's actually number three in the world. And uh, I'll show some of the actual trends on the next slide to show uh, uh, well, India is doing India with over 11,000 certifications, uh, followed next in Asia by China, uh, Japan, and Singapore. Ch Japan and Singapore are actually quite close in, in the 1300s, actually within within six of each other. I think they're jostling for position. In Oceania, we see uh, Australia number six in the world with over 5,000. And uh, not to forget New Zealand, which is right over at the far edge there. They've actually got 750 in New Zealand. If we look at the last 12 months growth, um, if we look at these trends, we can actually see that India has been the number one growth country in the last 12 months, uh, followed by the UK, USA, and France. So um, a lot of take up in India. We like to think that uh, the India initiative is, is a lot to do with that. And some of you will hopefully have heard about um, my colleague, Pala, Dr. Dr. Sahar talking about India the other day. Lastly, I'd like to finish by today by looking at open badges. Um, these are a way to provide digital versions of the open group certifications, and not just certifications, we're also using it for contribution awards and achievements. So it's a way to recognize a number of, a number of things that are going on in the open group and with the open group members. We've partnered with Credly, a company called Credly, using their Acclaim platform. Um, and as with all things digital, it's one, one thing we've heard over the past few days, um, open badges actually enable more value than just a certificate. So there's a bit more to it than just a certificate. 
when you earn a certification now, it's very easy to communicate that with an open badge to communicate that with to your peers and to your professional colleagues. Similarly, when you are ready to make your next career move, as I, I know we see a lot in the industry, open badges actually allow you to more easily communicate your certifications and achievements to prospective employers. The open group has a, a profile of the claim. And within that, there is actually a directory where you can search for individuals both by an, a number of criteria, by badges, skills, names, and also by location. Um, now, this is for people who choose to make their profile and their information within the acclaimed system public. Obviously, if you don't want your information to be searchable, then you should make sure that you set your profile as private. Uh, we have 83 badges right now. And we've issued over 40, 41,000 individual badges uh, to uh, certified individuals. Anyway, to, to illustrate some of the facilities with open badges, I wanted to actually take a look at my acclaim profile and show you some of the some of the things that I can do with it. So this is me. I've even put my photo up there. You can see here that I have uh, 11 badges. And if you notice, there are actually some different shapes. And those are actually three different types of badges. So if you look here at the top one on the top left, that's a certification badge. That's my, I think that's my TOGAF 9 certified. Um, the next one in on that is actually what we call the certification credential. Now, the difference between that and a full certification is usually the credentials are smaller chunks, chunks of learning. So it's, or it's a, you know, typically something like a refresher course. So. And then we also see some green badges on there that they're quite new and they're actually what we call contribution awards. And I will talk, I will finish at the end of this talk by just telling you a little bit about those because all members and in fact, all individuals who contribute to the open group are eligible to make a claim for those. If we make a click into a badge, we can see in one click information about the badge, about the credential, what it took to earn. So you can, uh, so if you say to an employer, you know, I've got you know, here the, to the TOGO standard version 9.2 badge, they can click, you can give them a link, they can go and click on that link and they can find out what that actually means. You know, what were, what were the criteria for earning the badge? Um, and they can also, with a single click, they can verify that that badge is genuine. So you click on the verify link and it will go down and actually display in real time, a sort of verification of some real time metadata associated with the badge. So you can see that that badge was issued by the open group to me on the 26th of April, 2018. It was issued using a claim accepted by me on the 30th of April, 2019. So I was a bit slow, wasn't I, in accepting that one? If we click on skills, one thing we notice with the badges, they also have skills associated with them. Um, this is a simple one here, just has the TOGAF skill associated it. If we click on that, we can actually look at the job opportunities for that skill. So I would click on that, and that takes you into what the claim, what the acclaim system calls labor market insights. And here we can look at the job opportunities for the UK, where I'm based. And this was uh, pulled, and this was me doing a search yesterday. Now this is pulled from live job postings around the world. Acclaim has sources data from more than 25,000 global job boards and corporate career sites. You can see yesterday there were 539 job openings in the United Kingdom that um, uh, were looking for the skill TOGAF. So senior enterprise architect was at the top of there. And I can see looking at the salary ranges, yes, that will do nicely. So. You know, it's an easy way for you to look at the opportunities or maybe to see what, you know, with your skills, what sort of um, salary you should be looking for. Now, now I've got this new badge, I want to share that with my peers. So what do I do? And this is done by clicking on the share button. Uh, what, um, what we do with our open badges, it's very easy to make sharing. Uh, what we find is that most people seem to share their badges to LinkedIn as the number one. The LinkedIn platform is the number one place for sharing. And the claim makes it very simple to share on LinkedIn. You can add, using a claim, you can add it to your LinkedIn profile and you can also share it to your newsfeed. 
This is the information here that you will get presented on the screen. A simple form pops up. I think to add to your profile, there's a, a few things you need to do, copying some data, but it tells you exactly what to copy and gives you a, a copy field to do it, so it makes it easy. And the other thing, sharing to your newsfeed, you can actually just put in a message, or it usually has a default message in there. So it makes it very simple to add this to your profile and also to share it to your newsfeed. And here's actually a couple um, that I've done recently or done over the past period. Uh, here on the left, you can see my, my certification section of a claim where I've got uh, my certifications and my credentials. And you can also see on the right there where I've actually announced a new badge on my newsfeed. Um, this is actually a contribution award that I was issued recently. And uh, reading the detail, that was for the third edition of the Archimate Foundation Study Guide. So we have updated that recently to um, support the 3.1 specification. I got the badge issued. I then went into a claim. I clicked the share. And as I did the share, I actually rewrote a little bit of a section, a little bit of an advert just for, to let folks know what the award was for, but also let folks know that the, uh, the, the actual new, new version of the study guide is available. That actually brings me on to my sort of last topic that I wanted to cover, and that was contribution awards. Now, these are available to all participants within the open group. They're available for a number of different categories. So we have them available for authors, co-authors, contributors, reviewers, and translators of the open group standards, guides, and case studies. Uh, we have a page here. You can go to www.opengroup.org slash contribution hyphen awards. You can read about it. It's a very simple online process for making a claim. You basically click on a claims form. It'll require you to log in, so you have to have an account with the Open Group. It gets your net, your profile information when you log in. Um, you can select the publication that you want to make a claim for. You can select the award type, and then it just asks you to up to upload one page from the document where your name is. In the front of all eligible documents, we have a either an author's page about the authors, or we have an acknowledgments page, which usually lists who the contributors were. So uh, you just upload that, that goes off into a system, and then automatically, typically, we say within, I think, six working days, but it's usually, uh, usually just the next working day when the, when the team are available that that gets processed, and you will have a badge issued. OK, so that really wraps up um, what I wanted to cover today. Uh, to summarize, I've covered three topics. Uh, I covered the open group training. Just to emphasize, we're enabled for virtual and e-learning delivery, so you know, business as usual, as best we can. Open group certification, also fully enabled for remote delivery, so you can take your, your training remotely or by e-learning again remotely. You can take your exams remotely. And lastly, we're now backing that up with digital first approach to issuing certification awards and awards through our Open Badges program. OK, so that finishes uh, this session. I think we go into Q&A now. <clears throat> That's right, Andrew. Thank you for that uh, tour of the, uh, the uh, TOGAF related and other related certifications from the Open Group. Thank you very much. And we've had some questions coming in. Before we go to those, you, you also had a poll running, didn't you, um, as to uh, if we're interested to know why people are um, interested in participating today. We're very glad to have you, but it's always good to know what it is that draws you in and so that for future events we can uh, maybe tailor the agenda to meet the uh, those needs. So uh, you will see there is a polling um, channel. Um, so please take the time to go in and, ans and answer, uh, answer the poll as best you can. Um, thank you very much. So um, and a reminder, if you have questions uh, for Andrew, please put them in the question and answer channel rather than the chat channel. Um, so we'll, we'll, we've had a few come in, Andrew, So um, and a couple that I will actually hold for the panel later because they're more about what's going on uh, uh, with the standard itself rather than, rather than certification. Um, but uh, let's kick off with, um, Many of those I have polled feel that four days is too rushed for the TOGAF um, certification course, and many of the concepts simply are not well understood in that time frame. 
is there a plan to well, question is there a plan to move it to five days but i guess more generically is there a plan to extend that period okay well in fact the open group doesn't doesn't mandate a time for training um, i think that's more a sort of a marketplace decision i think that's probably the sweet spot for the trainers and maybe that's something we should feed back but you know yeah maybe more time needs to be spent to cover the the topics in depth one thing we are doing is introducing um the certification credentials which are which some of them will be address specialization so that may give more time for people to go off and say right i've done the main course i would like to learn more about business architecture now and so therefore i would take the togaf business architecture level one credential which would where you would drill down for two days into business modeling business capabilities value streams and, and the like so right yeah so that that may be the way we go forward is to have more on uh, more credentials more specializations we might even go role based as well there's a there's a bunch of ideas as we move forward that we're thinking about that so it's always very good to get feedback yeah on, on the market uh, from users of how they're finding the current delivery platforms thank you so a question that just came in it did actually come in in the chat channel but i just happened to see it it flashed up and caught my uh, caught my eye and it's a it's a it's a uh interesting one to, to to have i know that you spoke of it but it's what is the initial certification to begin my togaf journey well i would recommend starting with togaf Togaf 9 Foundation, that's where I would start. Um, but you may also find out if you go to our accredited trainers, they may also, some of them have an awareness sort of level training. So maybe pick up the pocket guide. You know, if you want to study at home, pick up the pocket guide, have a glance through that first before you decide whether or not to um, pick up the training and certification. Right. So okay. Typically, we would recommend Togaf, Togaf 9 Foundation. Okay, and those uh, those materials are available uh, online, aren't they? Um, yes, we well, have. Um, yeah, we have two two places for our information. There's what we call the Open Group Library. So if you go to the Open Group homepage, it's on the far right, and we also have the Open Group Shop. Most things we give away for free, or uh, but a few things we do charge. Now, when we do charge, you know, it's not a huge amount of money. It might, I think, it might be fifteen dollars if you're if you are not eligible for a pocket guide. I think most of the pocket guides are free to members or to employees and members of the open group, but um, they may be $15 to non-employees non of members. Um, things like the practice tests at the moment, we're actually running, uh, they're all free right through June the 30th. There's a number of things like practice tests and reference cards that we've made free through June the 30th because of the current conditions. We'd like to encourage people to uh, you know, at least get, get an introduction to the standards. That's right. It's a great opportunity right now. Um, it, it really is. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned that we may drill down um, into some of the specializations. Uh, the next question is around business architecture. So the business architecture badge states level one. Is there an intention to introduce further levels in the future? Yes. What we wanted to do with with our business architecture was to make it clear it's not the be all and end all for business architecture. There's a lot more to it we've just started that journey we do yeah you know, our long-term plan would be to add you know a level two essentially maybe fully turn it into what we call one of our full certifications so that that's something we're looking at we have drafted a set of conformance requirements that would make it into level two that would be probably more application of actual doing it rather than just knowing about it so that's one thing we're looking at and obviously we'd like to extend it as well to make it wider as well as deeper right Sticking with the same certification business architecture, um, can it be done as a standalone exam with no foundation part one or, or certification part two? Yes, it can be. The TOGA business architecture, you can take that completely independently. We didn't, we didn't tie that to having any prerequisites certification. So you can take that one on its own. As I mentioned, there is a study guide, which I wrote it, but uh, actually with uh, co-authors. So. <laughs> Another advert, but yes, there is a study guide if you want to self-study, and we do have nine accredited courses, so you can go to the TOGAF accreditation course registers. All these information available from the certification tab on the uh, www.opengroup.org site, and you can navigate your way down and find out uh, who offers who offers what courses. 
So there's a question come in. You mentioned that uh, we have a new credential for in uh, TOGAF and security. Um, uh, are study materials available for that yet? Um, or rather, the question was your colleague or our colleague Chris Franklin answered the question saying um, uh, in the in the Q and A uh, channel saying that study materials are available at this link, but that one isn't study materials aren't available okay. is there yeah. a plan to introduce them and if so roughly when well we don't have a dedicated study guide for that one yet obviously there are guides on which it is based so if you were to look down at the conformance requirements it does call out a certain guide that you should read to supplement your TOGAF knowledge i think it's um, sadly i know it's g152 because that's the type of knowledge i have i know our documents by their document numbers which i think is the guide to integrating risk and security in a togaf enterprise architecture i think is the full <coughs> title something like that but there is a guide that you can go and read and you can look at the conformance requirements and see where the knowledge that's actually um, very new and that's assessed in a different way there and so that's a bit of a bit of an experiment we're doing with our accredited trainer channel to see um, where accredited trainers would actually provide the assessment so that that's quite new um really hasn't quite taken off yet but um, yeah but you know, we, we'd be we'd be interested to hear if you're interested in that if you're interested in study materials let us know it might be something that we should should actually do so. okay um question here i cannot find my recertification anymore at the open group website how can i find it Okay, I'm not sure which program that would be because most of the knowledge base programs do not have a requirement to recertify. So that may be part of our open professions program, in which case write to open professions. Actually, write to me is probably the simplest because I know my email address, <laughs> which is a.josey at opengroup.org. So write to me if you've got a, if you need to chase up on your certification. I'll, I will know who to put you in, in touch with. All right. There you go. From the, from the horse's mouth. Um, let's see. Uh, do you automatically earn the badge that you spoke of after successfully completing the exam? Okay, what happens with badges, obviously we're very sort of cognizant of privacy and GDPR and all those type of things. And so we don't just blast these things out to you. You have to actually opt into the program. So, the, so when you've completed your certification within, um, we say 10 working days, I think we do a badge run once a week. So what will happen, your, your certification will go into our badging system. We will then send you a request to opt into the badging program. So you have to opt in first before we can issue a badge. It's a simple, you'll get, you'll get an email that says, hey, this is from the open group, and you've recently qualified for a badge, you know, and it explains what we're gonna do because we will have to share your information about your certification with uh, Credly to, for, their, for them to issue the badge. So we have to get your explicit permission to do that. We do a badge run once a week. Once you click on that, it's a simple click thing. You'll get an email with a magic URL and you will click. That will then trigger our system to know that you've opted in. And the next time that we sync the badges to a claim, you will get it. What's quite nice with the claim is once you've set up your account there, you can set the account to automatically accept them. So you don't have to keep going backwards and forwards. And it lets you know when you've got a badge, it sends you an email. Okay. Um, next question is on TOGAF business capability modeling. When will the course have level two tests? Okay. Um, well, actually, if you do pick up our study materials and things, we do uh, we do have a lot of exercises around that area, which which we would encourage you to complete. That is something we are looking at. What I mentioned with the level two, that's something we're having an ongoing discussion about within the architecture forum the architecture forum has a certification standing committee uh, who we work with uh, we have drafted uh, as i say a, a set of level two performance requirements uh, we're yet to take that step forward um, they have to go through a review and approval process within the open group but um, that's something that's definitely on the cards it's just a matter of um, you know we will have to find the the time and the resources uh, yeah. to actually make it happen. <laughs> Typically, when we when we do a new sort of rollout, it might take us, you know, a quarter, three or four months to actually do it. From when we get the sort of we decide go to actually do it, and depending on how we do it, we might have to beta test exams, develop exams, and so on. So there's a, you know, it's not something we can instantly just flip the switch on. It's something that takes a, a development period in order to yeah. 
you know, develop something and QA it as well to make sure it's you know, good enough. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> different different uh, angle or perspective for this question. Have you got any feedback from hiring companies about certifications and their value? Uh, I, 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 no, I don't have. I don't know if any of uh, any of our other team on the team have, but no. But so what we do find looking at things like labour market insights, it's very easy to um, see with the you know the, the skills and um, job postings that are calling for TOGAF certification and other open group certifications. That's the sort of that's the sort of feedback level that I see, and you know, which yeah. may not be detailed enough, but that's what I see is the marketplace asking for these things. So, you know, yeah. when we started yeah. out, you know, nine or ten years ago, we we didn't have that, so now we're we're widely placed. Yeah, that's right. It's it's very common to see uh, uh, either as a requirement or a preference for to have a TOGAF certification for an enterprise architecture job. Okay, talking of jobs and careers, uh, I'm a certified TOGAF architect. I would like to understand the path for master certified solution architect and its other prerequisites. Can you speak to that, please? Um, I'm not our world, the world's expert on open professions, but um, I don't know if anybody else on that. I don't know whether anybody else is going to come on voice from the team from Chris. Chris Franklin perhaps wants to open answer that one, or but basically. Um, we do have the open professions program and within that there are certain disciplines and probably master what was it master certified solutions architects yes. is, is one yes. of those yes. uh, my high level understanding is that there you would have to submit what we call a, an experience profile uh, basically a package detailing your um, your skills and your experience. So it's not really, it's not knowledge based. It's not about what you know, but it's about uh, how you, the skills you have, which include both technical skills and soft skills. And then the experience where you're actually able to demonstrate projects. And then you go up against a um, basically a review panel. So you go up against your peers who will decide whether or not you've met the criteria. Obviously, the criteria are documented. So uh, look when you go to, again, the certifications tab of www.opengroup.org, look for what we call our um, our skills and experience based certifications. And that, that's the that's the path you would take there. So you yeah. will need a certain number of years experience before you can go down that path. But that is the logical way to go after you've got your TOGAF um, certification is to start um, using your skills and experience. One thing we are doing as we go forward with that program is breaking that program down into what we call milestone badges. So as I talked about open badges there, you will see a new set of badges appearing in the open group um, badges site, which actually just breaks that down. So it just means that when you prepare a package to apply for that, you can actually do it in much smaller chunks. So there's like, a, you know, you've got your communications badge and then I can't remember there's a few different badges but it just makes it a little bit easier so you can get some a little um, you know some feedback as you go along and then when you've got your five badges you can get the, the certification so. that's right sort of uh, milestones along the way isn't it it's a it's a much easier process than yeah. it used to be so okay yeah, uh, if you... it, it, yeah if folks yeah. want to know more about that again drop me an email and I will put put you in put put people in touch with the right people yeah, I've just added a, a link in the Q&A to actually take people straight to the OpenTA page if, if they, they want to get the details of that as well. So, yep, thanks, Chris. Yeah, I, I knew Chris knew. I knew Chris knew where it was. <laughs> and uh, and our colleague Corinne has been answering some questions around uh, our, do we have certifications for digital transformation? She's uh, referred people to uh, the DP book um, standard and the um, study materials for that as well. So. So uh, I won't uh, trouble you with that one, but that question uh, has been answered. If you were the person asking it, um, Corinne has been there, there and answered that. Um, here's an interesting one. Um, what's the additional value gained from a TOGAF certification if you're already certified as an open group master IT architect? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Um, I think it depends what your when you did your certification as a master IT artifact, architect, artifact architect, <laughs> it depends um, what method you referenced. You see, so um, you know, um, and maybe you will see job postings that specifically call out TOGAF certification. Yeah. That might be the other other thing. So it really depends. 
you know, what yeah. we are looking at is perhaps adding maybe one day, adding um, the skills and experience badges directly into the TOGAF certification program and making a level three. Again, no, no promises. This is not a commitment to a forward-looking statement, but that's the sort of thing we are looking at to cross-fertilize between the approaches we're taking, and we can do it much easier by splitting things up into badges as well now. So, right. right. Can I just add to that, Andrew or Steve? Yep. Yeah, I, I would say that the the real difference is that um, with the Open Professions Program and the Open CA component within the Open Professions Program, what you'll find is actually the key behind that is actually what we're looking for is experience of within so within your particular field. Um, and um, it's designed to actually be non-specific to any methodology. So it, it doesn't ref refer to TOGAF um, in particular. However, if you have TOGAF experience, you can use that. Whereas being TOGAF certified um, and sort of I show it is, is actually around showing that you have the knowledge of TOGAF specifically as a standard. So. Um, to summarise that, TOGAF shows TOGAF certification shows that you understand TOGAF. Um, being an Open CA certified architect um, shows that actually you know how to apply TOGAF or any other sort of architecture methodology. Right. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. And 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 the point, the other point that Andrew made is sometimes the the job requirements uh, are, are such that you need TOGAF. Um, which you didn't need for that certification, absolutely. Um, again, there's a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, questions coming in. Uh, Corinne's doing a great job on answering. Let me find one that she hasn't got to yet. Uh, I did see one. I did see one question. I wasn't sure we've answered. Was I haven't got my badge for my certification? How do I get it? Yes, that was, that was is, the next one in line. Which life. is a good question. And you can email badges at opengroup.org. Mm. Ideally, you should give us your at least your certificate ID. If you've got the ID on your certificate, that would be very helpful. It just makes it quicker for us to track, track you down, that's all. Badges right. at opengroup.org is the email address to, to send to. That will raise a ticket in our help desk, and we will be able to get on and, and get that out to you. OK. Um, let's see. Uh, we had uh, there's a, a question I saw come in about um, where is the best place to learn Archimate? Um, well, <laughs> obviously, we, we, we would recommend one of our accredited training courses. Right. Uh, you, know, you know, we tend to not recommend any specific course over any other, but um, we yeah. would recommend you go to our register of accredited courses and um, maybe look at the calendars that we've got available as well. In fact, we just as well as the calendars I showed, um, we're actually producing a new training calendar, which is actually a bit more searchable, a bit more WYSIWYG and stuff. And you can uh, look up on there. Maybe you can find a course that's that's near near to you. And uh, in the Q and A link, some of our colleagues, um, Corinne and Sonia, have been in giving specific uh, specific links to where you can find those those course details and the and the calendars. So uh, uh, that's being answered in there. Um, when will, uh, this is going to be tough to answer because the question is we don't know yet, the answer is we don't know yet, but when will the Open Group Agile Architecture Framework certification be available? Yep, that's a good question. Um, I think Steve's right. We don't know yet. Um, for those who are following that work, there are, it's got to go through a couple of stages um, in standardization first, the actual standard itself before we, before we get around for that. We did we did do some preliminary work on conformance requirements, but they're not they're not close to being final. Um, at the moment, there's a document which I think is what they call their security playbook, which is out for review. And I know there will be a second round of review on the actual what they call the OAAF standard, the mm -hmm. Open Agile Architecture Framework, the Open Group Open Agile Architecture Framework. That's it. So yeah. we expect that to probably finish company review with a tailwind probably around July, I should expect. And then we can see what where we get with um, with, with certification development and things. That's not currently got a got a release date. Right. Okay. And um, we're 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 running out of time, but um, there's a question that says, could you share the email? I think 
that probably means your email, which you did um, offer to uh, out to people for putting them in touch with the right people. Yep, a dot j o s e y at opengroup.org. Initial dot surname at opengroup.org. So, okay, I may not know the answers, but I'll put you in touch with the people who do. Right, right. And there's a question in uh, there's a question in there is a, a, about what's the difference between TOGEF and Archimate, and I think uh, we'll hold that because I think that will that will come out uh, in the later session today. So. Um, uh, hold hold that thought. So I'm going to end with this one. And apologies to uh, anyone who I I haven't got to. Um, uh, but oh, it's just flipped with somebody else coming in. Here we go. Uh, I I am a head of enterprise architecture with 20 years plus experience. I studied Togef9 in 2012 and have been applying it in multiple organisations at multiple levels. But I failed the book exam at the time. What's the most expedient route to certification? Well, it depends whether you feel you've got the, you know, whether you need a, a, you know, the benefits of of attending a course or whether you're happy with self-study. So, you know, there's a choice there, isn't there, really? Um, our trainers are offering both virtual remote training and also I know there are e-learning courses available. So it's, or, and there are study guides. So, you know, there's, a, there's at least three choices. Yeah. And although I said that was the last one, I'm going to throw one more in because I'm sure this is this reflects the situation of a number of people who are uh, um, attending today. And that is, I don't work for a member organisation, but I want to get in, involved and I want to start my uh, path to becoming TOGAF certified. What do you recommend? I think you may have mentioned it earlier, but it's worth repeating. I think how should I essentially how should I get going um, in learning? In yeah, learning yeah. TOGAF? Well, you don't. You a, you don't have to be a member. So if, if you if you just want to get involved in learning things, you do, you do not have to be an employee of a member organization to do that. Um, if you want to get involved in, um, in, in the open group, that's a slightly different question. So I'm assuming this is about getting involved in certification. Yes. So, um, yes. you know, and, and you can do that just by going to our site, maybe start by downloading the, some of the free information, you know, downloading the reference cards, uh, looking for, um, yeah, there's some of the presentations we've got. A, we've got. I think we've got over 200 webinars out there. So if you just want to just take a webinar on, you know, what's what's in Archimate or what's in Togaf, that there will be, you know, there are a lot of them out there. You can just go down and watch those for an hour, and you know, get get the feeling for it um, Great. before you decide to go forward. You know, and then again, when you decide to go forward, it depends what you want to do. Whether you want to, whether you're one of these people who just want to self-study in your own time, or whether you prefer to actually have uh, you know, a trainer sort of guide you through and we've got you know there's 69 courses available so. yeah plenty of choice plenty of choice and it is what uh, you know down to personal preference and budget and all sorts of things 